This is Mike Smith. Welcome to today's show. Well, the riot is over. It's been over for a long time now. The losers and goofballs are on the run. The cops are trying to track them down using the ICBC face recognition software. We're going to get you. We're going to get you all, you losers and goofballs. And then they're going to get dragged into court and they'll get their slap on the wrist. But at least we're going after them. But we've cleaned up the mess. They can wear their stolen tuxedos to court for their slap on the wrist. But we're still cleaning up the mess. It's back to normal downtown, more or less. But now the political riot has begun. It was a riot at Vancouver City Hall yesterday when NBA counselor Suzanne Anton went right after Mayor Gregor Robertson. She's trying to pin this whole riot mess on him. Here's how Janet Brown reported it. This is one of the most traumatic events in our city's history. Councillor Anton and the mayor sparred for some time, and eventually he shut her down without letting her introduce a motion calling for her own review of the riot. Anton says Mayor Gregor Robertson bore some responsibility by encouraging people to come downtown to the live site to watch games on the big screen. How does the public possibly have confidence in this review that's going forward right now? Vision Vancouver Councillor Jeff Meg says it's all political grandstanding. It's a ludicrous kind of device of petty politics that we're getting more and more for Councillor Anton as she tries to build up a mayoralty bid. Okay, we got uh, Vision Vancouver Councillor Kerry Jenks standing by, but first, let me go to Mike Claussen, who's a well-known blogger in Vancouver. He's running for council in the fall for the NPA along with Suzanne Anton. Hey, do Mike. Hey, well, Michael. Hey, thanks for doing this. Now, I'm checking out your blog, right, and your headline is Robertson's Riot. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's what you're calling this thing now, right? Robertson's Riot, which kind of reminds me of when you used to talk about Gregor's gridlock, which kind of didn't really work out. <laughs> Re remember when you set up that website called gregorsgridlock.com? No, nah, well, that you never know. really had to use it because there was no gridlock. You know, there's now you're calling this thing Robertson's Riot. Now, is, is that fair? I mean, you, you tell me why this is Robertson's Riot. Well, there's nothing like a good alliteration. Of course, I'm digging back to my English major university degree. Uh, with Sam Strike, Gregor's Gridlock, Robertson's Ride. Everybody loves when you match the two uh, uh, letters, the consonants. Yeah, you're, you're digging into the old uh, political bag of tricks here to well, stick this thing on the mirror. Uh, Robertson's Riot. It, well, look, uh, when you are doing all of these things out of your own office, and I yeah. think what a lot of people don't appreciate is that uh, Vancouver City Council are, is the decision-making body in this city. Uh, and it, you know, as much as Gregor might want to see himself as the president of the United States, where he can, you know, cast executive orders on creating community gardens on the front lawn of City Hall, or, or uh, you know, throwing big screens down on Georgia Street, those are the kinds of decisions that really are intended to go through City Council. And, and, and that's the whole part of the, pe the the whole process that was left out. So. You know, and, and so now, if you look at how the decision to, to came about to do this, there was really no scrutiny by council. I mean, you know, even with one member of the opposition, Councillor Anton, you at least get a few questions asked, basic questions. And she had an opportunity to start asking those questions at the end of May. This is before we got into the whole... Uh, um, uh, the big, huge fan zone commitments, the big screens moving it down to Georgia. So she started to ask some questions. That's when we heard Penny Ballum say, well, they're planning to ratchet down the police costs. Um, well, but hang on a sec. Are you saying that Suzanne Anton, if she had had a chance, would have said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We shouldn't be telling people to come downtown? Was she ever on the record as saying this was a bad idea, telling everyone to come downtown and have a good time? You know, that's the thing that, that that's the kind of spin that has been sort of thrown out. Really, what? No, but you know, answer the question though. Did she? Has she? Was she ever on the record? But, you know, as I'll, saying this is a terrible thing. Oh no, no, wait a minute. There's a way to do these things, and then there's a way not to do them. And this is what we learned from 1994 that only started to see the light of day afterwards. And I confess, I had no idea. I don't think anybody, very few people at City Hall, and of course, Vision Vancouver have fired pretty much all the senior management since they've gone in there. So there's, there's no corporate memory left in this building. But what they had were reports done, internal reports, as well as the police commission review. Now, you heard the whole thing about the White Law, uh, the Bob White Law guy who came out and said he helped to author that report, and then the yeah. police chief. There was another internal report that's got very little ink from, uh, from the local media. It was an internal report done 
um, that was uh, put forward by city council. And it was an excellent report, and it outlined how do you avoid doing these kinds of things. In 1994, Vancouver, um, like now, really took it on the chin. They felt so badly that they had had this right. And, of course, at the time, this was just people piling downtown. They didn't invite them downtown by setting up video screens. So they had... They asked some basic questions. They said, what do you do once that game ends? Once the game seven ends, what's the plan? Do you tell a bunch of kids to go home? Well, of course not. You actually give them something to do. So they give you this whole long list of, you know, like you're supposed to have um, uh, social planning staff out there to trade events. You need to have okay. communications events. You need to have volunteers organized. None of that stuff was done this time. They okay. just set up the screens Here's... and put up some, some fences and said, come on down. Yeah, and, and what did you do, Mike? I, I mean, I went on your website, and I was checking out where to be for free on citycaucus.com. Right? And, and in fact, we ha- I had you on the show, and we talked about it. And we were talking about, hey, where's all the cool places you can go downtown to gather in a big crowd to watch the game? And one of the things on your Where to Be for Free website was go down to the fan zone. Go down to Gregor Robertson's site. And now you're saying, like, oh, this is a terrible thing. What what is he doing setting up video screens? It caused the riot. You were plugging the video screens. I was plugging. You know what? I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to get Rogers Arena opened up and had a a $10 a ticket. All that proceeds went to charity. It was a family orientation. If you remember, I was going families, families, families. When are we going to get the families down here? That's what made the difference during the Olympics. And you know what? They did that out in Surrey. They did that out in Richmond. They did it in West Vancouver. They said, come on down. We'll have the stilt walkers, the the clowns with the balloons. What, are you saying so if we had some stilt walkers downtown, the riot wouldn't have happened? Well, you know what? They needed to have a plan. They (laughs) They would have been been bashing people with the stilts. Oh, I know that. That's what they would have done. When you let it to get to the way way it was, because I, I think everybody that tells me, they go, gosh, you game five was so scary. They had 100,000 people down there. I saw it. You know, like I went, wow, that's incredible. There's 100,000 people down there. And then, you know, it, it never dawned on me for a minute that they didn't have a plan on how to deal with okay. these folks. Okay, let me ask you this. The fact that Jim Chu, the chief of police, won't say how many cops are on the street, and Gregor Robertson appears to just respond to that with a shrug. He's the head of the police board, right? Mm-hmm. Gregor. So shouldn't he be demanding to know how many cops are on the street, and shouldn't that be basic public information, don't you think? The problem with Mayor Robertson is that I, he's what I described as being accountability challenged. When he had the fare evasion, he made he shrugged that one off. When the Pandora Street fires happened, he said, That's no, you know, he ducked out of the media for a few weeks. And on this one, he's had the very same problem. We had the one opportunity to actually in city council yesterday, Councillor Anton said, "Look, I want to talk about this." You know, the first item on yesterday's agenda was the wheat fields, at which you did a good job <laughs> on yesterday. But then, when there was an opportunity with the media present, with council all assembled to actually talk about it, Gregor shut off her mic, and, and I think with what, good reason. What do you think about Suzanne Anton and what she did yesterday, storming out of that meeting? Was that grandstanding? What was that? Yeah, you know, I think. I felt the frustration. I mean, this is, if you watch how this council works, you know, when Mayor Sam Sullivan, you know, you know, works and all, if you, if you look at how Sam conducted the meetings, he always had a respect for the chamber. He never made snide remarks. Soon as Suzanne Anton put a point of order, Gregor Robertson said, oh, what a surprise. Suzanne wants to do a point of order. What kind of arrogance you know, is that to have the guy in the mayor's chair? That's a side of the mayor that a lot of the people don't see is how he carries himself. He okay. thinks he's above scrutiny on this one. Okay, Mike, thanks for coming on. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Is NPA City Council candidate Mike Class, and you can check out his stuff at city council, uh, citycaucus.com.